Good morning and welcome to morning prayers for Monday, March 22nd. Let's prepare for morning prayers. Long ago, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. They wear out like garments, but you are the same and your years have no end. That's from Psalm 102 verses 25 to 27. Let's be still and aware of God's presence within and all around. In the silence of the early morning, your spirit hovers over the brink of the day a new light pierces the darkness of the night. In the silence of the morning, life begins to stir around me. And I listen for the day's first utterances in earth, sea, and sky. And in the landscape of my own soul, I listen for the utterances of your love, O oh God. I listen for utterances of your love. Amen. The Lenten devotional selection is called Hindsight Grace. And the author quotes Luke 18, verses 31 through 34. But they understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what he said was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. And actually, that's just verse 34. The disciples didn't get it, but who can fault them? Jesus told them everything about his death and resurrection, but they were kept from understanding it. His words may have been plainly spoken, but they were beyond human comprehension. They had ears, but did not hear, just as the Messiah had anticipated. So if Jesus knew they would not understand, why did he take the time to explain it to them? Maybe he wasn't explaining things to them at all. Perhaps Luke recorded an experience in retrospect in order for Christ to explain it to us. Although they didn't get it then, a retrospective look can reveal the intentionality of God's plan. Looking back on the events leading up to the cross, Luke remembered that Jesus knew exactly what would happen. He did his best to prepare the disciples, even if it meant they wouldn't understand it at the time. Being in full control of his life, he willingly went to the cross. Though the process would be traumatic for Jesus and for the disciples, these words let them know that the the course was anticipated, and that Jesus was prepared. Occasionally, we are invited to look back at the traumatic moments of our lives and see how God prepared us, even when we did not under understand. The gift of hindsight allows us to see from the past what we could not perceive in the present. When we take a backward look, we will likely see God's grace working in ways we did not understand at that time. There are authentic moments when we cannot process what happens at the time it occurs. Some events are so traumatic that the significance is hidden from us, as it was for the disciples. By leaning into God's grace in the moment, we can let go of our need to understand fully. After all, some things are only clear after the fact. Jesus, thank you for your hindsight grace. Teach us to let go of our need to know now. Prepare us for the day when we will know and be known in your presence forever. 
Amen. And the psalm is Psalm 114. After Israel left Egypt, the clan of Jacob left those barbarians behind. Judah became holy land for him. Israel, the place of holy rule. Sea took one look and ran the other way. River Jordan turned around and ran off. The mountains turned playful and skipped like rams. The hills frolicked like spring lambs. What's wrong with you, sea, that you ran away? And you, River Jordan, that you turned and ran off? And mountains, why did you skip like rams? And you hills frolic like spring lambs. Tremble, earth, you're in the Lord's presence, in the presence of Jacob's God. He turned the rock into a pool of cool water, turned flint into fresh spring water. Psalm 114. And a psalm in response, psalms for the struggle. And this one is called A Place to Rest. And the author quotes the second verse of Psalm 114. Judah became God's sanctuary. She writes, Holy One, may we be your sanctuary. Just for a little while. May we give you a place to rest. We, your people, fashioned by your hands, knit together in your womb. We, your people, written on your heart, held in the palm of your hand. We, your people, apple of your eye, bearers of your love. Linger here just for a little while and live in our spirits. Sweep out the corners of our hearts and make a place here that your love might shine forth into this broken world. That we might be your face, your heart, your tender presence to those we meet. That we might know you through knowing us. That they might know you through knowing us. Just for a little while, Holy One, may we be your sanctuary. The place to rest by Beth A. Richardson. So let's reflect on our Lenten devotion, our psalm, and our poem. For the night followed by the day, for the idle winter ground followed by the energy of spring, for the infolding of the earth followed by bursts of unfolding, thanks be to you, O God. For rest and wakefulness, stillness and creativity, reflection and action, thanks be to you. Let me know in my own soul and body the rhythms of creativity that you have established. Let me know in my family and, and friendships the disciplines of withdrawal and the call to engagement. Let me know for my world the cycles of renewal given by you for healing and health, the pattern of the seasons given by you for the birth of new life. Let's pray for the coming day and for the life of the world. In the busyness of this day, grant me a stillness of seeing, O oh God, and the conflicting voices of my heart, grant me a calmness of hearing. Let my seeing and hearing, my words and my actions, be rooted in a silent certainty of your presence. Let my passions for life and the longings for justice that stir within me 
be grounded in the experience of your stillness. Let my life be rooted in the ground of your peace, O oh God. Let me be rooted in the depths of your peace. Amen. Have a lovely Monday. I'm struck by the words in our opening prayer. I listen for utterances of your love. So may we all listen for utterances of God's love today. And I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>